Welcome to the STO Summit in Korea. Joining us today is Edward Chen. He is the managing partner of HTX Ventures Partners. Hello. Hi, Jun. Hi. Um, before we dive in, could you share a bit about yourself and your journey in STO industry? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, it's a wider definition. Uh -huh. more like Web3 industry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I joined cool. the Web3 industry since 2018. 2018. 18, oh, yeah, that's think, pretty early then. I think it's almost six years. Yeah. Uh, before that, I do my own startup in the Web2 world. Oh, I, used, okay. I used to run the e-commerce platform. I used to run a right healing platform. Oh. I used to run O2O platform as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in the 2018, I joined the uh, Web3 space. Cool. Uh, more focused on the uh, asset and the trading side. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when you when you when you get involved in the business, yeah. STO become one of the you know very popular mm -hmm. concept. And uh, we start we start to study the concept and start to do some you know interactions and uh, business collaboration with the partners excellent yeah. um then can you provide a brief overview of your company's involvement in the sdo or web3 industry oh yeah i mean i mean for H htx i think mm -hmm. it used to be as hobby we still keep the oh. hobby name okay uh, yeah we still keep the hobby HTX name. is hobby yeah it is hobby oh, I didn't uh, know we that. still keep the hobby name but hobby is more for chinese so you're working with justin Yes. Oh yeah. wow. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So for Hobi, we still keep that name for the Chinese uh -huh. or you know people who can read Mandarin. Yeah, because in Korea we call it Hobi, Hobi Korea. Yeah, as yeah, well, yeah, Hobi so. Korea. But we don't have Hobi Korea anymore. Hobi Korea, I think they do some they adjustment. They closed down. Yeah, closing oh. down. But uh, for Hobi, the main stage is mm -hmm. still operating. But for the global market, because mm -hmm. you know when you go to different region, uh, different people with different language, they uh, they may not such easy to pronounce hobby in Mandarin, oh, okay. right? If, uh, <laughs> for example, I, when I go to uh, Russia in 2018, 2019, uh -huh. the people there would just just usually call hobby as a uh, hobby because they <laughs> hobby. cannot they cannot pronounce very <laughs> smoothly. Uh. Yeah. So that's why we uh, we do some adjustment okay. and uh, re rename to the call HTX. HTX? Okay. So that's easier for global users. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, what do you guys do in STO industry? Yeah, I think STO. I think we can go uh, go back to the history of 2018. I think during that time, 2018, mm -hmm. 2019, STO is very popular. Yeah. Especially after the successful launch of Tezos. Mm -hmm. Tezos, I think, is still so far the one of the most successful and the most the biggest uh, uh, STO project uh, globally. Mm -hmm. uh, so during that time, we do a lo bunch of job with them. Uh, for example, we do a lot of uh, co-branding stuff. We do a lot of uh, community growth stuff. Yeah. And uh, we do some, you know, ecosystem project support stuff as well. Cool. And uh, we also be involved in the uh, investment, mm -hmm. relevant investment cases. So that's our experience in the past. But uh, uh, to be friendly, start from 2019 to 2021, the concept is not such uh, active. Okay. Uh, if you compare with other Web3 concepts like oh. NFT, yeah, true. Uh, or maybe DeFi, GameFi, GameFi yeah, these concepts be become more popular. Mm. But uh, still, they still growing very, uh, how do you say that, stably? Stably? stably because, okay. because the market is there, the demand is there, so that's why still a lot of people, uh, okay. especially for very uh, high end investors uh -huh. with lower risk and uh, they want a, a, mm. a, a more safer solution for the for the asset yeah. to do the financing, the STO is still one of the best choice for them. So that's why the STO market is still growing. Okay. Yeah. Then how do you see STOs impacting traditional finance or investment? Uh, I think it's more like uh, add-on. It's more like a complementary solution, which can make the whole traditional finance ecosystem more complete. Okay. Because, you know, every single market, no matter for financing or for traditional, you know, manufacturing or for biotech, you know, Every single industry, you have to embarrass with the new technology. Mm -hmm. the, otherwise, you cannot survive for longer time. Yeah. For financing, it's the same. Since the blockchain technology grow, since the tokenomics grow, mm -hmm. you have to find a way to, uh, to, to properly take use advantage of this technology. Mm -hmm. I think STO is one of the good uh, uh, you know, practice mm -hmm. in this area. Uh, but you know, the, the weight of the because every single time when you talk about innovation, we yeah. always has opportunity and risk. So, mm -hmm. uh, how to balance the the risk, the innovation, and the regulations? Yeah. 
the, the, the chemistry, the mix ratio is different, so that's why you have different uh, uh, format. Mm. So we think STO is one of the most uh, safest uh, practice for traditional finance. Okay. Uh, yeah. As a digital assets, right? Digital asset, okay. digital digitalization assets. All right. Yeah. And as Hobi already launched Korean um, platform previously, so previously, I'm sure yeah. that yeah. you are quite familiar with Korean market. Uh, yeah. um, how do you see the Korean market influencing or being influenced by the global STO landscape? Oh yeah, I think number one for Korean market is, is one of the I think the most active and the most. Uh, yeah biggest the single market for mm. Web3 world. Uh, okay. We have the latest data and also I discuss with a lot of, you know, uh, how do you say that, industry pioneers. Uh, okay. You know, for example, we know in Korea there are around 45 million uh, population yeah. and uh, around 25 million people, mm -hmm. they had the crypto. They investing hold in crypto. Investing in crypto. Yeah, include me. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah, of course. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can tell. Yeah, so which means the market is very active mm -hmm. and the people like the crypto Web3 idea. Yeah. Definitely for STO, I think the majority of the people, uh, they willing to try. They're willing to try. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on our research, which I will share a little bit about the data, we okay. do the research, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, after this interview, uh, the STO market for Korea is growing as well. Uh, it's growing. And, okay. and uh, in the, I mean, based on the prediction, uh, I think go to 2013, it will reach to around uh, 220 billion or oh. to, uh, to, to, uh, 20 billion, 20 billion dollars. So oh, that will be a okay. uh, very, uh, quite a big market. You mean in globally? No, just for Korea. Just for Korea. Yeah, for oh. globally, it will go to reach to around 300 billion. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Then could you share a success story or case study from your experience in the STO industry? Oh yeah, I mean, because I, I, I based uh, out of Singapore, so we okay. s do see a lot of, um, how do you say that, STO practice. Mm -hmm. uh, Singapore has few very successful STO exchanges, okay. they call it AAX yeah. or, uh, and some uh, other uh, STX, mm -hmm. right? And actually I'm, I'm one of the, the, the STO exchanges advisor as well. Oh, so, okay. uh, so we see a lot of uh, good practice. So. Because you, you have a lot of a high uh, high quality and a premium uh, token or asset issuer, so they 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 bring out their maybe very cherished mm -hmm. asset. For example, some real estate. Yeah. Yeah. For example, in the past, real estate is, is very hard. It is. Yeah. It's very hard to to trade because of mm -hmm. the low liquidity and a yeah. very high res restriction, mm -hmm. right? But based on STO, then you can divide this one asset into a lot of different pieces yeah. and it will be much easier for smaller investors mm -hmm. to enter the space and do the you know trading like with retail asset. investors uh i think for for singapore right mm -hmm. now the regulation only covered uh, oh, high net wealth clients okay uh w they trying to expand into retail but okay. still in the discussion all right but in some of the space like maybe you know if you go to us, US? Uh, mm -hmm. retail clients can already can trade yeah. the STO projects. And even in Korea, they, they're now open for retail investors. Oh, uh, excellent, well. yeah, yeah. Because STO has, I think, the, the, the most uh, restrict uh, regulation protection. Mm -hmm. So it will be much easier for retail clients to try. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, then, how has the regulatory landscape influenced your approach to STO project? Um, for us, to be friendly, we why why uh, why we discuss because you know within Web three space, there's a lot of different conference, yeah. big conference, right? Why we're interested to join the STO Summit? Uh -huh. One of the reason is because we uh, we think we, we saw we saw a very interesting trend in the first half year. Uh, the RWA concept become very popular. Yeah. Yeah. So what is RWA? Actually, you can call them real Risk world asset? assets. Oh. Uh, real world assets and, and the cover. It cover a lot of different uh, type of assets. Yeah. Actually, STO, based on our, our understanding, mm -hmm. is part of the RWA, okay. but has m higher, you know, regulation uh -huh. standard. Mm -hmm. So that's the differentiation and the relationship between each other. From RWA, because if uh, I can show you some data, if you go with the DeFi pillar, mm -hmm. RWA concept already go to the number six TBL. Oh. They already have run. Uh, uh, I think around of around five billion dollars money already invest into the RWA. Okay. So we see this trend is still continuously growing, and uh, because I take charge of the investment, so mm -hmm. we also see a lot of 
uh, very very solid uh, top tier team and top tier project upcoming with the RW concept. So we we, we see a, a booming future for mm -hmm. this area. Since the, this concept is growing, STO definitely will get a more positive push as well. So that's why mm -hmm. we wanna uh, get uh, have more uh, presence in this area and to meet all a, a lot of you know industry pioneers mm -hmm. and you know good projects team yeah. to support them and find our business opportunities cool. as well. Is that why you're here today? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Then looking ahead, what trends do you anticipate in the STO industry and how is your company preparing for them? Yeah, we think number one, for STO, the market will continue growing. Mm -hmm. More and more people, because you know, for, for the Web3 space, it's around uh, 300 million users yeah. so far globally. Uh, for STO, maybe, you know, Smaller, maybe smaller, smaller but yeah. uh, align with the growing of the Web3 space, the STO's user pool will grow as well, mm. that's number one. Number two, uh, align with the growth of the fun funding amount of the project which they can uh, raise the money from STO concept. Mm -hmm. More and more high quality asset or asset issuer, they were willing to use the join. STO, yeah. join the market, mm. use the STO as a good tool for yeah. them. Uh, so more good asset will come. When more okay. uh, asset will come, more investor will come as well. True. So we see this trend as I think quite promising. The only differentiate is based on the you know the yearly growth rate, right? It's five mm -hmm. percent or ten percent or maybe fifteen percent. I mean, but at the end of the day, we think this will, uh, will become a very uh, promising market. So that's cool. why we want to do something here okay. no matter for you know set up our own STO exchanges mm -hmm. or we do some investment in the primary market so that to support high quality project to launch yeah and also we do some other you know uh, uh, complementary service cool and what advice can you offer to the other companies looking to join STO industry yeah I mean for us actually that's also part of the the content I will share during the presentation for mm -hmm. Bobby we have a very long history yeah uh, usually when I meet people will say oh I mean we we play as a kind of dinosaur player <laughs> in the industry since 2013 yeah uh, but we're still here mm -hmm. which means we have a, a quite a robust uh, system so for us, no matter for the trading or for the you know for the investment, we mm -hmm. have a long history. For yeah. Kobe Ventures, we mm. we founded in 2018, uh, and so far we invest in over 200 uh, 230 projects, mm -hmm. <coughs> and we are investor for over 20 top tier industry venture capitals as well, okay. and we incubate around 15 to 20 projects uh, cool. so far. So what we can offer is definitely number one. Uh, we can do the early stage and growth stage support uh, for the STO projects Excellent. if they want to raise the money mm -hmm. uh, from equity sale or you know private sale side. That's number one. Number two, we can also do the incubation accelerating service so mm -hmm. that we can help the project because you know especially for STO, a lot of project owners or issuers they came from the traditional world. They mm. may not have such strong Web three yeah. mindset yeah. and they don't know how to you know, properly packaging, properly marketing the project. Mm -hmm. For this part, we can definitely help them and we can uh, make a lot of connection with all, a lot of, you know, uh, um, you know, top tier resources to support the project cool. to grow. And uh, at the end, as I just mentioned, because we play as an exchange role, even we cannot uh, list the STO uh, asset, we have a lot of uh, good uh, connection with other STO platform, mm -hmm. which we can support the project to list, which will be uh, you know, the ultimate yeah. goal for them. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Thanks for joining us today. That's all for today. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.